Hey, it's Professor S coming to you from inside the animator and today for the next five minutes or so I want to talk to you about the various components of eukaryotic cells like these three guys to my right. So let's just dive right in. All eukaryotic cells have an outer boundary formed by a plasma membrane and contained within that membrane is what's called cytoplasm. Uh, that's the entire fluid matrix of the cell and all of its organelles excluding the nucleus which I'll come back to in a few minutes. Now if you want to isolate just the fluid portion of the cell only, not the organelles but just the fluid, that's called cytosol. The fluid within the membrane but not within organelles. If we call it cytoplasm, that's the fluid, everything suspended in it, and the organelles as well. While we're on the subject of cytoplasm, contained within it are these protein-based structures called cytoskeletal elements. There are three main types which I'll talk about in other videos, but these cytoskeletal elements each have different properties and different functions that they bring to the cell uh, that relate to the cell's shape and stability and ability to move. And so they're contained within the within the cytoplasm and as long as I'm on the subject of the cytoskeleton one type of cytoskeletal element the microtubule is built at what are called microtubule organizing centers like these centrosomes. The centrosomes are a very particular type of microtubule organizing center. Uh, they play a big role in mitosis, uh, division of chromosomes within the nucleus when they're present. They're found in animal cells they're usually absent from plant and fungal and a lot of protist cells, but it's biology usually means there actually are some plant cells that have them and, and some fungal cells that have them, even though the basic rule is they're animal based. Uh, so centrosomes uh, relate to cytoskeletal elements, specifically microtubules. Now the nucleus is that typically large, typically singular, typically centrally located uh, membranous structure that contains the chromosomes. Keep in mind all those words typically means there are exceptions. Think of the nucleus as central control for the cell uh, because it contains the chromosomes. The chromosomes are going to then operate by interacting indirectly with the ribosomes which are in the cytoplasm. Uh, the chromosomes contain information for building proteins and the ribosomes actually do the job of building proteins and they're found throughout the, uh, the cytoplasm. A lot of the organelles you see over there clearly have membranes and their various canals, sacs, spheres, balls, all kinds of ways we could describe them. And collectively in this video, I'm going to refer to them as the endomembrane system. Uh, these include things like the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, the Golgi apparatus, uh, lysosomes, transport vesicles, peroxisomes, uh, secretory vesicles, and, and a number of other vesicles. Not all of those things strictly fit together in a continuum, but most of them do and they interact in a way that allows for the construction, transport, and storage of substances within the cell. There are a couple organelle types, or a couple types of organelles that are what we call plastids. These are organelles that have double membranes and their own DNA. Uh, these include in almost all cells, mitochondria, which are plastids that engage in aerobic respiration, so aerobic production of ATP. And then in plant cells and a number of protists, there are chloroplasts. These plastids engage in photosynthesis, uh, conversion of CO2 to sugars using energy from sunlight. While we're on the subject of plant cells, there's that huge big organelle in the middle you can't miss that's not the nucleus. That central vacuole plays a big role in plant cells in maintaining proper turgor pressure because plant cells really depend uh, in terms of their shape on pulling water in from the environment fairly easily. And then uh, finally, as long as we're on the subject of plant cells, let's bring the fungal cell back. They also have cell walls. Plant cells, fungal cells, a number of protists have this additional organic matrix wall beyond the plasma membrane called the cell wall. It's composed of different things in different groups, cellulose in plants, chitin in fungi. Animal cells don't have a cell wall, but they do have an elaborate extracellular matrix, which I'm not showing in these pictures. Uh, it's a network of, of proteins and other macromolecules, organic molecules, uh, that interact to form a supportive mesh network around the cell. And there you have a quick run through on eukaryotes, and I'll cover all of those pieces in separate videos.
Um, Are you smoldering? No, I'm, I'm trying to get the glare out of my, my glasses. It looked like you were smoldering. No. Gla Do the take. Hey, this is Professor S, and if you found that video helpful, here's a couple others that you also might find useful. And don't forget to click the button to subscribe so you can see all the new videos as I put them out. Get off camera now.